love this problem. I love problems like this. And the reason is because they illustrate some of the elegance of organic chemistry in terms of taking a starting material that might, on the surface, not look anything like a product and converting it into a, a really cool looking product in one step. For any of you guys, by the way, who might be considering going to grad school in chemistry, you will probably, at whatever school you go to to do that, be given things called cumulative exams. One of the te uh, techniques that I learned was numbering stuff. And that is a very, very important technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to number this, one, the carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and see if you can somehow figure out, based on what this looks like, what, what's, where some of the stuff is going in the product. You can see that a carbon one, for example, that is a carbon that has two CH3s coming off of it. You see that? So, yeah, so I hope you can see that over here, this guy right here has to be carbon one. Does that make sense? So where you go from there might not be super obvious. You can see that carbon one somehow does something that gives you a ring that has that's a six member ring. So one, two, three, four, five. So one, two. No, probably it's gonna be the other way around. Let's 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 try this. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Let's see if we can do that. This is kind of tricky stuff. I might have numbered this wrong. Ultimately, um, once we start drawing, pushing arrows, we'll see. But you can see that I've got acid, and so the first mechanistic step is going to be that this guy comes out and grabs a proton. So that's going to give me this type of intermediate. I've got, once again, carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so you might look at that and think, okay, um, I, I mean, the electrons between carbon 1 can go into the oxygen, or between carbon 2 can go in the oxygen. Now, in order for this to work out and form what I need, what's probably going to have to happen is these pi electrons are going to have to flip in here and pump these up on and into that oxygen to neutralize that charge. Now, that might not be super obvious. But you can see I've numbered these, one, two, three, four, five, six, so that's going to form a six-membered ring. So I'll draw a six-membered ring, and I'll put my carbon one right down here, and uh, I'll go ahead and put my carbon... Yeah, so I've got my carbon six is forming a bond with carbon one, and then I've got five, four, three, and two. So you can see that when this guy comes in here to that carbon, pushes these electrons up, there's an OH now coming off of carbon 2. And then carbon 6 just lost electrons. Carbon 6 is still bonded to 7, 8, 9, 10. However, in this exchange... Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Carbon 5 just lost electrons. So it's basically this 6 taking these two electrons to himself and then using that negative charge to form a bond with 1. Okay? So that's what's going on now. And then I've got uh, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is starting to look more like my product. But making that first leap, I think, is the trickiest thing. You can see that if these electrons come in there, this just swings like a door on a hinge. Carbon 9 ends up being the loser. And what I get is this. I've got 7, 8, 9, 10. 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'll go ahead and draw this. I'll number these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, now, ten just formed a bond with carbon five, which is what I've got in that product. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that more clearly. Nine is the loser. Nine just lost electrons, so he gets a positive charge. You can see that there's water in the salt. Well, you can't because I just moved it. But water is the solvent there. So water 
lone pair electrons on this oxygen have to come in and uh, form a bond with that carbon plugging that hole. Once that occurs, it gives me this product. And then I can have a second molecule of water come in and deprotonate, removing that proton and pumping those electrons up into that oxygen, and that gives me my final product. But you can see drawn over here in the upper right. Sorry, I'll, I'll move that down so you can see that. So there is a mechanism for that. That's pretty dang fun, I think. I think that's dang fun. For this mechanism right here, that's going to come. so I'm treating this molecule with uh, H2SO4 and water, and it turns it into this product that has two double bonds. Also, just a gorgeous, gorgeous example. So here's the mechanism. Of course, I've got H plus from my H2SO4. Electrons come out here and grab that. That's going to protonate this oxygen, giving me a positively charged oxygen. That is now a great leaving group, so it's going to leave. Okay, now, in order to keep things straight, once again, I'm going to go back to my technique of numbering. And I don't know if it really matters. How I'm just going to number this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What's going to occur is this bond is going to just shift over. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Basically, I just took this bond and just moved it over one position. When that happens, carbon-1 ends up becoming the loser. Oh, yeah, and I just realized that there was a double bond that I forgot to to bring along for the ride between carbon six and like five and six there. Sorry about that. There's totally a double bond there the whole time, even though you didn't see it. Okay? So if you're okay with this, I'm gonna redraw this so that it looks more I mean you can you can see that if I take this and I just rotate it this way. I've got uh, two, one, six, five, four, three. And then I've got a positive charge on carbon-1. Now one thing you might not really see right away is that this can resonate. So I'm going to write down resonance. This double bond can swing over there by resonance. And if it does, it gives me this. I hope you guys can see that okay. This guy flips over here, I get a positive out there on carbon-5. If it flips back, I go backwards. Flips back, I go backwards. I'll go ahead and number these so that we can keep them straight. So going to the end, all I have to do is realize that if I take a molecule of water and use it as a base, it strips that proton, pumps these electrons in here, this is an E1 reaction. And it gives me my final product. It's got a double bond there and a double bond right there. And that is it. That is a fun, fun problem. What does the box say?